it's the most existential uh, debate and challenge humanity will ever face. There is some crazy things going on in the world of AI, which is about to change everything. Some experts are predicting there will be no jobs just one generation from now, and we'll all be sat at home on a universal basic income. Some experts are predicting AI could get so smart so quickly that they will mark the human race as no longer necessary, giving a Terminator-like scenario. We've had world's richest man Elon Musk recently warning of the dangers, saying, how many years do we have before AI kills us all? We've had an engineer at Google that got recently fired for saying the AI model he was working on had become sentient. And the list just goes on and on and on. And so this video is a bit of an urgent wake-up call. I'll be sharing some clips. First up, we have the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, and why he recently resigned from a very prominent position in Google to warn about what is about to come. Then another Google director has come forward to voice his concerns about how this could be months away, not years. And then we'll finish up with more of a positive note. Is there a way that we can potentially benefit more specifically financially from what is coming our way? As always, if you do enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does. Okay, so first up, starting with probably the biggest pioneer in AI of the last 30 years, Jeffrey Hinton, and why he recently resigned from Google, saying that it's a legitimate threat to the human race. And this is why. It's the fact that things like ChatGPT know thousands of times more than any human in just sort of basic common sense knowledge. But they only have about a trillion connection strengths in their artificial neural nets. And we have about a hundred trillion connection strengths in the brain. So with a hundredth as much storage capacity, it knew thousands of times more than us. And that strongly suggests that it's got a better way of getting information into the connections. And then a third thing was very recently, a couple of months ago, I suddenly became convinced that the brain wasn't using as good a learning algorithm as these digital intelligences. And in particular, it wasn't as good because brains can't exchange information really fast. And these digital intelligences can. I can have one model running on 10,000 different bits of hardware. It's got the same connection strengths in every copy of the model on the different hardware. All the different agents running on the different hardware can all learn from different bits of data, but then they can communicate to each other what they learned just by copying the weights because they all work identically and brains aren't like that. So these guys can communicate at trillions of bits a second and we can communicate at hundreds of bits a second via sentences. And so it's a huge difference and it's why chat GPT can learn thousands of times more than you can. So essentially, Jeffrey Hinton was making two main points. First is that even though our brains have a hundred times more connections than the current version of ChatGPT, it can still learn a thousand times more than us. And the second point is very similar to if you have ever watched Star Trek growing up as a kid, you might remember the Borg. You can have a thousand or a million different computers computers, all learning something individually, and then share everything it's learned to all copies in a matter of seconds. And this is something which would take humans years to do. And it doesn't just end there. Recently, more people from Google, senior directors have come forward to warn that this also might not be years away, but a matter of months. It's the most existential uh, debate and challenge humanity will ever face. If you assume 
that the machines will be a billion times smarter. The second event inevitable is they will become significantly smarter than us. Let's put this in perspective. Huh? ChatGPT today has an IQ of 155. Okay, Einstein is 160. We're matching Einstein with a machine that I will tell you openly, AI experts are saying this is just the, tip, the very, very, very top of the tip of the iceberg, right? You know, ChatGPT4 is 10x smarter than 3.5 in just a matter of months. If they continue at that pace, uh, if it's 10x, then an IQ of 1600, hmm? just imagine the difference between the IQ of the dumbest person on the planet and the IQ of Einstein, when Einstein attempts to explain relativity, the typical response is, I have no idea what you're talking about, right? If something is 10x Einstein, uh, we will have no idea what it's talking about. This is just around the corner. It could be a few months away. Hmm? And when we get to that point, that is a true singularity. And so the point Mo is making is that we're likely a matter of months away from having something that's 10 times smarter than Einstein. And at that point, we simply won't understand what it's talking about. It would be a bit like trying to explain particle physics to a monkey. Now, one of the biggest fears I have is when the difference in intelligence is, say, something like humans and flies. And this is not a might happen, this is a matter of when. Well, luckily for us, Mo explains there is a scenario where this could turn out just fine. If their intelligence zooms by so quickly, they may ignore us altogether, okay? So they may not even notice us. This is a very likely scenario, by the way, that because we live almost in two different planes, we're very dependent on this, you know, biological world that we live in. They're not in part of that biological world at all. They may zoom by us. They may actually become so intelligent that they could actually find other ways of thriving in the rest of the universe and completely ignore humanity, okay? So what will happen is that overnight we will wake up and there is no more artificial intelligence leading to a collapse in our business systems and technology systems and so on, but at least no existential threat. The limitations we have to be stuck to planet Earth are mainly air. They don't need air, okay? And, and mainly, you know, finding ways to leave it. I mean, if you think of a vast universe of 13.6 billion light years, hmm, if you're intelligent enough, you may find other ways. You may have access to wormholes. You may have, you know, abilities to survive in open space. You can use dark matter to power yourself, dark energy to power yourself. It is very possible that we, because of our limited intelligence, are, uh, are highly associated with this planet, but they're not at all. And to finish up on more of a positive note, is there a way that we can all benefit from this massive AI trend coming our way? And the answer is yes. Now, not financial advice, but there are two things that you may want to explore further. Number one, and that's to invest in probably the best up and coming AI company, which many experts are saying is gonna explode in price over the coming years, and that is Tesla. With machines driving everyone around to a machine in every single household, Tesla is potentially an excellent investment over the coming years. Or number two, if you didn't want to put all your money into just one basket, you can also invest in all the best tech stocks through one single ETF, and that is Triple Q. This way, you can pretty much own all the best AI companies, including Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, 
Tesla and Google. Now, beneath all this doom and gloom, I do actually personally believe AI is gonna bring some huge benefits to the human race, from transportation, to just household chores, to investing, to business. And so clearly it's a topic worth paying close attention to right now. So if you enjoyed this video, then simply let me know by dropping a like, and I'll do some more on the these specific topics and for now thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye for now